you cannot be wise with another man's experience. We had to go through that to learn what it is that we've learned about trying to build the best basketball team in Oklahoma City with a set of values that people here would appreciate and would resonate with them. And so the next 15 years, the second mountain is what we're focused on now. With the experience that is our own, that we're not mimicking anyone else, we're not imitating anyone else, we're applying those first 15 years and trying to see if we can do better. Welcome into the Thunder Basketball Universe presented by Coop Aleworks. We are recording this on Thursday, September 28th. That means that Sam Presti, the Thunder's general manager and executive vice president, held his annual preseason press conference yesterday where it kind of serves as a prologue to the upcoming season. And he covered a lot of ground in that press conference as he usually does. So we're going to break down all of those highlights, all those key takeaways here today, but stick around also later because I got a chance to meet a couple of our new Thunder players yesterday at a community event. So I'll have everything that you need to know from those two guys as well. But but let's start with Sam here, Nick, because as we all know, these press conferences, they tend to be a little bit lengthy, right? Yesterday was right around two hours, but there were so many good nuggets of information from this press conference. And a lot of it was him kind of explaining that a lot of what he talked about last year still applies to this upcoming season. Yeah, this is a continuation of what we've seen really since 2020, 2021 season. Uh, but the cool thing about what Sam does at the outset of every year is you know, if the regular season, if that's if that's the meal, if that's dinner, mm -hmm. preseason, you know, that's the appetizer. This is really setting the table. This mm -hmm. is making it clear, you know, what's going to be on the table this season, what we're supposed to look at. And the interesting thing is Sam, you know, said, kind of reiterated what he did last year as well, which is there's going to be way more questions than I have right. answers right now because the whole season is a process of discovery. But he did highlight a few key things that, are going to be on his mind and will be on the team's mind throughout the course of the season. I think we can kind of dig in yeah. to some of those big themes. He does such a great job of bringing kind of a big picture approach to what ends up being that day-to-day 82-game -day grind. And kind of getting us into the mindset of how everyone within the organization is kind of viewing this team and this season. And one of the things that he said kind of carried over from last season was the fact that there's a wide variance with this team. It's still a very young team, even though the, the guys have been growing up over the last couple of years. It's still a relatively young team. And with young teams comes regression, growth, spikes, droughts, all of those things. And there's a wide variance for how this season could go. Yeah, and this has been the youngest team in the NBA for two years mm -hmm. running. Might be one of the youngest again this season. And so you're going to expect some stretches where they lose five straight games. Right. Or they might go eight and two during a stretch. What they showed last year was some great emotional maturity to actually stay pretty steady throughout all of that. They're going to need to bring that back again this season. And none mm -hmm. of that is guaranteed year over year. So maintaining that composure both within games, between games, and across weeks is really, really qu critical. Uh, and something that Sam recognizes is not something that they should take for granted that just because they were able to do it last year, that they're going to definitely be able to do it again because these environments are ever changing. Right. You know, he, I remember at the end of last season, he talked about culture mm -hmm. and how that might be overused because th this situation, it's an atmosphere that's constantly evolving right. based on new players that are coming in, guys that are leaving, guys who have improved, guys who have gotten older, guys who understand the game a little bit more. With more seasoning, this group is going to understand that even the top team in the NBA is going to have a stretch where they lose four out of six games. Right. The sky is falling on every team multiple times a year. You got to be able to weather that storm. And that's the beauty of basketball in general is handling adversity, handling the different environments that come your way. And the Thunder has done a tremendous job, as we saw last season, of using adversity and changing environments as a competitive advantage. How many times did Mark Dagnall change the lineups coming into each and every game? All of that kind of orchestrated tension yeah. and and. Controlled difficult chaos. controlled chaos yeah. exactly all of that helps make a player better and the thunder used that to their advantage and, and speaking of mark the other thing that sam presti mentioned as something that 
was an emphasis last season is also an emphasis this season is play style. And yeah. Coach Dagnalt has, as we all know, has done a tremendous job of kind of laying a foundation since he got here of the style of basketball that this team wants to play. And that's something that is still continuing to grow as this team evolves. Yeah, there's a great quote that I wanted to pull from uh, my article that I wrote about this press mm-hmm. conference. And he, he said, you know, play the play that's in front of you what is the most natural play that should be taking place? What's the play that should be happening here? That that attitude is what gets the team playing to its capability of serving the game. Right. And when you're playing, basically what he's saying there is agenda-free basketball and just executing what's in front of you in terms of the best play available, uh, that's what's going to turn you up a notch in right. terms of being able to be greater than the sum of your parts. That's the goal. That's been the goal since Mark took over. Um, obviously a contract extension for Mark this summer, more kind of evidence and mm-hmm. solidifying that this direction that the team is on is exactly where it wants to be. They've shown progress. They've been able to have outstanding individual performers yep. like Shea, J-Dub within the team concept. Right. And this is something that the team is doubling down on. I, I love this point that he made because he, he really, he painted a really good picture of it. He, he laid it out in the sense of like, a lot of the times you hear coaches say, make the play, right? Yeah. Just go out there and make the play. When in reality, what we want to be saying in, in this organization is serve the game, like yeah. you were mentioning. And it, it really kind of shifts your perspective on how these guys are approaching the game, how they're approaching, you know, making plays out there on the floor and, you know, what what how they're viewing things on the floor. And so I thought that was really interesting to see that sort of perspective that this team is going to have coming into the season. We'll have lots of time to get into the nitty gritty, but once we actually see the guys in yeah. action and we get to that appetizer of the meal. But from a point guard's perspective, what does that actually look like out on the floor <laughs> yeah. to be serving the game rather than trying to make a play? It, making a play to me sounds like, and this is how I internalized it, was, okay, I'm given orders and I'm going out here and I'm making a play based on what I think I need to do as a player. And so that means if my skill set is shooting threes, I'm going to find a way to get a three pointer right now, whether that's, Hey, come set a screen for me, or I'm running all over the court because my way to make a play is to get a three serving. The game means the three's not falling right now for anybody here, or we have the advantage in the post. So rather than me trying to get a three to make a play, I'm going to make sure that I get the ball to the big man because we have an advantage in the post. That's not me. Did that ever happen in college? Did you ever allow that to happen? Or <laughs> of did course. You? Okay. Of course. What are you talking about? <laughs> Serving the game. Yeah. Yes, that's what I do. Um, but it was always, it, that's the that's the mentality that I think that he's talking about. It's not looking for ways to institute your tools and your strengths in any way possible. It's how can you serve what's best for the team in this setting? Yeah. And Sam, like kind of no other can put these in terms where he studies other aspects of life. He loves music, of course. And so he really made this great point of like, not everybody to, to what you're exactly what you're describing. Not everybody can turn their own volume up on their instrument up to 11 Otherwise, the music is going to sound terrible. Exactly. Everybody's got to be tuned to the right volume for their game. Mm -hmm. And that's not preordained. It's not scripted out before the game happens. And that's why basketball is such an amazing, artistic, delicate balance. Because in the middle of the game, guys are turning up their own levels a little bit. Guys are turning down their own levels and figuring out exactly what level they need to be on to serve the game, to serve their team. Exactly. The Thunder did a great job of that last season, had a, a remarkable win jump in terms of 16 right. games improvement. Um, but again, none of that is guaranteed for this year. This is what Sam is laying out as the goal and the vision for the season. And it all comes down to making sure that they had the same, it's a new season, but it's the same sort of determination, the same work ethic, the same process that they're going to follow year after year. And part of that is the the third thing that he mentioned as something that's continuing over from last season. And that's kind of combating these silent forces mm. that a young team tends to face. Things like stats, right? Like yeah. turning down your own volume, turning up your own volume. You don't do that if you're focused only solely on your own stats. Things like social media and just outside forces, outside noise, things like that. And impatience when it right. comes to growing as a young player, all of these sort or of- growing as an organization. As an organization. Team, right? You're yeah. not being impatient in terms of front office decisions as exactly. well. Exactly. Yeah. So all of those things 
the Thunder has really done a good job of last season. You mentioned the emotional maturity of this team fighting against those things every single day to make sure that they're working to their best and as a group together going towards the same goal. Yeah, and the way that Sam twisted the narrative on this in a good way um, that I had not really thought about before was a lot of times when these external forces are happening to a team, they're viewed that way. Like it's this unstoppable tide that's just eroding the beach. But Sam views it much differently. He says, look, every team is up against some type yeah. of, of adversity like this. It's incumbent on the team to be prepared, to not run away from it, to not hike up the shore, yeah. but to actually you know, build out uh, that rocky jetty that you need to build yep. to, to block the tide from coming in or doing, doing the things that you need to do in order to combat those things, look them squarely in the eye. And that all comes through communication, mm-hmm. through togetherness, through a commitment to actually being able to um, be on the same accord as your as everybody on the team. And so uh, that's a crucial element to this season and this approach is, yes, there might th- be these forces coming at a young team like this, but the Thunder's not running away from them. They've actually got to steer into the skid yes. and figure out ways to overcome them and actually overwhelm them. Right. And there's... There's going to be a lot of twists and turns that come with every season. And the Thunder and the NBA in general has an entire wrench thrown into their season with the in-season tournament this year, right? That's going to be something new that everybody has to navigate this year. What that looks like, nobody knows. But Sam Presti had an incredible message to the fans and everyone watching, and it was simple. Enjoy the ride. Yeah. Because these this is a young group. As we learned last year and the year before last, it's a fun group. These guys are awesome. We've gotten a chance to talk to them out at community events. They're head in the right place. They've been in the lab working very, very hard every single day. And so while there are going to be ups and downs and twists and turns, it's going to be fun to watch. And his message was simply enjoy the ride. Yeah. And I mean, that's what sports is all about. Right. You, you want to be in the trenches with your team every single day. No team is going to go 82 and 0. No team's going to, you know, have a stretch of a month straight where they play right. beautiful basketball and they've got it all bottled up um, imperfectly. This is a living organism mm-hmm. and it's also, it's ours. Yeah. You know, it's, it's Oklahoma City's and it's a great chance to just hold on to something that's yours, be a part of that ride and, you know, watch our broadcasts every night yeah. and, and help be a part of the team in that way and um, get a sense of the guys' personalities and mm-hmm. um, really be there to support them either in the arena or um, when you're watching at home. Uh, the other aspect of that, Paris, is just that, you know, these guys have – they are committing to the team. They're committing to the organization. They're yeah. committing to being one of the 18 guys that eventually – gets this team back into that sustained level of success, right. the, the postseason births that they want to see year after year after year. And Sam talked about how guys like Trey Mann, Jeremiah Robinson Earl, they've been wearing out that court yes. at the Thunder <laughs> Ion. Of course, we know Shea, intense off-season workout mm-hmm. regimen. Every guy looks like you know they're cut out of marble right now <laughs> this time of year, and that's yep. just how that, how that goes. Yep. Um, but Sam had another great quote that I included in yeah. in my story for OKCThunder.com about serving the game. Um, this was about how really good players, anybody that's really good at anything in life, knows how to activate themselves yeah. and knows how to be self-starters. And that's what you have on this Thunder roster. When Sam Presti, right mm-hmm. before the draft, always talks about, you know, we're looking for people, not players. That's what he means. Right. He means guys that are not going to be sitting around waiting for somebody to tell them what to do to get better. Yep. How yeah. we never hear Coach Dagnall saying, you know, I really had to light a fire under yeah. Shea to like get him going, or like I really had to get into Trey Man to make sure that he was out there working. Like, no, these guys want to work hard, and it's it's ingrained in them. This is a group of self starters and guys who know how to activate themselves to bring their best selves to the table, and. They've been working really hard yeah. all summer long. Okay, so let's get into just some of the major takeaways. We kind of laid out a lot of yeah. them here, but just just to be clear and concise here, there are a lot of unknowns heading into this season, as there are with any season, but that's okay. That is A-okay, and the Thunder is prepared for that. Yeah, that's part of the journey. That's part right. of the ride. That's what's so exciting. If we knew who the starting lineup was going to be every single night for all 82 yep. games, if we knew who is, was exactly going to be in the rotation every night, you know, it might not be as fun and dynamic as when you head into a season and there's 
so many players on this roster that could yeah. factor into that group. The, the starting group could be different from the closing group. Heck, Sam made a great point that the group that starts the second half is it's often different, different than, than the group the that started the, the first game. half. Exactly. And that's all great. And it's and it's a, a beautiful process of letting the game yeah. unfold. It is, again, it's serving the game. How many nights did we see Aaron Wiggins popped into the rotation at like the 40 minute mark and he makes this great impact. And exactly. Like, those are the types of twists and turns that you expect in like a Hollywood movie, right? That yeah. like the guy comes in off the bench with, with six minutes, eight minutes to go. You think about the Isaiah Joe night in Dallas last year. Yeah. I mean, like there are these things that you cannot script and that's what is beautiful about this. And when you go into the season knowing that you don't know what's going to happen, you can have an open mind to things like, hey, let's throw Isaiah Joe out there. We're down by 13, exactly. 16, whatever it is. And we'll see what happens. Well, all of a sudden you got a rotation player out of it when you realize the guy's going to come in and bomb five threes. And yeah. not to mention this time last year, Isaiah Joe wasn't even on the team yet. Right. He missed all of training camp. So that just goes to show this, this open mindset and this, this mentality of ob observing, mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Rather than just evaluating everything immediately. This is a very, they're keeping a very observant mindset to this season, very open mindset. And with every new season, as we mentioned, comes new challenges, different sets of adversities, but it's the same mentality of working hard, leading with work and working together as usual. And that comes from a place of humility. Yeah. And I think that is a crucial word for this fan base to be thinking about when they view this team this year. This, this is a team that is not entitled to any of those 40 wins that it got last mm -hmm. season. It is going to be a vigilant team in addition to being a, a humble team. And those are qualities that I think Oklahomans can really resonate with. This is a, right. a team that's not going to be expected to hand, be handed anything. Um, they're not going to get bonus points heading into each game because they had a nice season last year. <laughs> right. You know, this is a team that is going to have to go out and scratch and claw and earn every exactly. single thing that it, that it gets this season. It's a talented team, but it is a young team. Mm -hmm. And the talent and the youth is such a potent combination mm -hmm. uh, that we're going to see results all across the board. And it's going to take humility to take every opponent seriously. And it's going to take vigilance to make sure that they're primed and ready for every single possession to get the job done this year. And the preparation has started this off season to ensure that th even though th there's so many unknowns heading into the season, these guys have been working to make sure that they put their best foot forward come the start of training camp. And, Sam Presti told us there have been coaches all over the world, yeah. really, with these guys. I mean, you have to imagine, like, guys like Josh, Shea, all over the country, all over the world, playing with FIBA, just making sure that these guys are able to, you know, really get their work in and, and have all the resources that they need. Jeremiah Robinson, Earl Trey Mann in the Thunder Ion consistently this offseason as well. So you can imagine these guys have really worked to level up their games coming into this next season. Did you put Josh through any drills when you were in Australia? He within? wouldn't let me. He wouldn't let you? I mean, I, what can I teach Josh that he doesn't already know? There's got to be something. I was asking Josh for pointers. <laughs> <laughs> like, how do you see everything? Teach me how to be six foot eight. Um, but and then lastly, just enjoy the ride. Yeah. That, that was the biggest thing out of all of this. Nick, you and I are looking forward to this upcoming oh. season so much. Like we've been able to talk to the guys and see just how much they've grown and changed just physically yeah. as well. I mean, there's there's so much to unfold this upcoming season. And you just think about the like influx of new talent yeah. and people that are back into the equation. Kenrich Williams, you know, sometimes we forget he missed two months of last season. Yeah. Two really crucial, exciting, exhilarating months of March and April. He's going to be back in the fold. That's an amazing addition to to bring back into this team. Chet Holmgren, of course, we know this was this will not really be his first year as a professional. He mm -hmm. got that last year. This will be the first year that the Thunder is able to utilize his professional skills exactly. on the floor. Um, and then you've got Casein Wallace. By the way, the number ten pick in the NBA draft. Um, <laughs> he looked excellent in summer yes, league. Did. That's going to be a, another uh, wrinkle to add to this team. You think about Usman Jang and yeah. um, the other the other returning rookies. So second year guys, J Dub, J Will. Um, you know th these guys are going to be different people, different players coming back in. All of that is going to just be fascinating to observe over these next few weeks as uh, training camp begins next week. Next week, if you can believe it. So mark your calendars. Be sure to come to 
OKCThunder.com and the Thunder Basketball Universe podcast. We've got you covered. Be sure, if you haven't already, please go to OKCThunder.com and read Nick's article that recaps everything that Sam talked about in that press conference. Really great job with that article, Gallo. And don't go anywhere because we've got more. I was able to speak to a couple of our new Thunder faces. We'll get into that right after this break. Coop Works is the proud sponsor of Thunder Basketball Universe. Brewers of the fan favorites F5 IPA and 99 Calorie Ice Chest IPA. You'll find those and many more Coop beers at retailers across Oklahoma. Learn more at CoopLWorks.com. Okay, so Sam's media avail was in the morning. That started at 10 a.m. And so Nick went and he wrote his story, which took the rest of the afternoon, while I got in my car and I zoomed over to the OU Children's Hospital because that afternoon, the Thunder had a community event at the Children's Hospital. This was... This isn't new for the Thunder to, to you know, make an appearance at the Children's Hospital. They also had a, uh, what was a Halloween one last yes, year. Yeah. That one was super precious this year. So it, it, they have this area called the zone at the Children's Hospital, and it's a play area for the kids. They can come in. They can, you know, they can draw if they want to. They can go and play video games, pop a shot. There's like a mini, mini kitchen over there too. They can do anything. Wow. And so they, we walk in and there's two therapy dogs roaming around, first of all, which instantly yeah. you're just happier immediately. But then after about 10 minutes or so, two very tall men <laughs> walk into the room and it was Thunder newcomers, Jack White and Vasilye Michich. And this was their first ever community event as a Thunder player. And when I tell you, this was one of the sweetest community events that I've been a part of. It was so sweet. And just watching them interact with these these kids, you would never have known that they had only stepped foot into Oklahoma City for the very first time the week before. Wow. It was yeah. so wholesome. And they were there for maybe about an hour or so. Vasa, I mean. That's what he's going that's by. That's what he goes by, Vasa. Is, yeah. He, they had a Papa shot set up. And so naturally, like. The players are going to gravitate to pop a shot. He's teaching the kids, yeah, good. How, how many do you think I can make? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, at one point, he picks up this little girl because she, she was struggling to get the ball to the rim, right? Like She couldn't have been more than four, maybe three or four. Picks her up and carries her to the rim and is like, you got it. Oh, <laughs> and like helps her. So good. Yes. Yeah. And I was like, oh, my gosh. That, that just warmed everyone's heart in the whole building. We were talking earlier about kind of the self-starters, yeah. right? And the type of people that the Thunder are looking for. And the fact that, you know, these guys, they go to a place where I'm sure they're not, you know, they might be on edge a little bit. Yeah. A, children's hospital is not always the easiest place right. to be. And the fact that they jumped right in oh and they gosh. didn't they didn't hesitate at all. It's just, that's so cool. The, the images, the video that came out of that, if you didn't see it, you got to check it out on all of our at OKC Thunder social channels and at the, on the website, okcthunder.com. Um, so cool that you were there. And I'm yeah. just curious, like, what else can you give us about Jack and, and Vasa? Okay, first of all, I mean, Jack, great accent. It's a yeah. very familiar accent, if you know our very own Josh Giddy. <laughs> yes, he's from Australia. And the kids had such a fun time with him because they were like, are you from England or are you from Australia? Nice. And Jack yeah. had to answer all of the questions that come with being Australian in, the, in America. Um, but just getting a chance to talk to them after, first time ever meeting them, and... So Jack had got in, I believe, last Thursday, and Boss has been here for about two weeks. And so this is all fresh. This is all new. They're getting to learn their teammates during these, you know, workouts. And now this is their first time getting a chance to meet the community for the first time. And they have just, they wax poetic about how everyone has just welcomed them with open arms and how much they appreciate that, especially Vasa, who is getting used to America yeah. for the very first time. And so this has been a really... Well, warm welcome for them coming into Oklahoma City and for Vasa into America for the first time too. I, I got a little glimpse of those guys over the summer yeah. and Vasa just strikes me as like very serious professional mm -hmm. player, like a guy that is locked in on his craft. I'm sure Thunder fans are going to love to see him out there and just doing his thing. An adult in the yes. room for sure. Yes. Um, Jack, much like Josh Giddy, as you mentioned, very effusive. Yes. Loves to talk. Very good at the, <laughs> yes. at the chatter part of the of the whole being a part of the team uh -huh. thing. And I had a great time chatting with him. Um, 
I'm curious about his arrival to OKC. He didn't even have a car when he lived in Denver. He just walked wow. to the arena. Practice facility for the Nuggets was at the arena too. So they just, he didn't have a car. Didn't need one. Oh my goodness. He's going to need one here at Definitely. OKC. So <laughs> curious to see, you know, how he's gotten all settled. And I can't wait yeah. to, to catch up with him and talk to him. Yeah, yeah. I, I did not ask all of that. I, yeah. w- I would have loved to hear how he's getting around in Oklahoma yeah. City, considering everything's about 15 minutes yeah. away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you, the pros pro element of both of these guys yeah. – but especially Vasa, you could just tell that he has been a pro for a long time and he really understands just how important community is when you're a professional athlete. And for Jack, just all smiles the entire yeah. time, just all smiles, wasn't turning anyone away, getting down onto the level. Like, you know, like you, you're a dad, right? Like when when folks come and meet your kids and oh. they like get down on your kid's level to talk to them, like that, that's different. Yeah, they know that game. There's just some yes. something like different that gets triggered there when you actually meet the kid where they are and right. you treat them like a child but talk to them yeah. like like an adult and that really goes a long way yeah. um, when you when you uh interact with kids and definitely would have warmed my heart if those had been my kids exactly. in that hospital. Yeah. And also, I'm just thinking from their perspective, it could have been really easy to just be like, "Oh, like we're new and these kids They've never seen us play for the Thunder, so will they know who we are and, like, kind of be standoffish or wait for the kids to come to them? But these kids loved Jack and Vasa. They were, like, taking pictures, asking them to help draw and, like, help them play a game. It was just – there was such a good connection there. It was just all smiles the entire time. I left feeling so happy (laughs) that 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 happened. Yeah, and these are the things that just make the connection between Mm -hmm. the Thunder and the city so special. And um, that's this is a day that those kids are always going to remember. And those guys are going to remember it too. Definitely. That is a bonding moment. I don't think there's any coincidence that the two newest guys Mm -hmm. to Oklahoma City were the ones at this event. Um, exactly. I think that that is a bonding moment that just happened there. And it was really cool getting a chance to meet them for the first time, get to know them a little bit more off the court. Yeah. We're going to have more of that because media day happens next week. First thing next week. All right. Uh, that was my transition into yes. what's on tap. <laughs> <laughs> Take notes, kids. That's how you do a transition. Um, so media day coming up first thing. And then training camp immediately yeah. following that. So we're going to get a chance to talk to every single player. We're going to get a chance to get into their summers and all of that, how they think, what, what they think going into next season. So we're going to have a podcast following Media Day. Be on the lookout for that. Yeah, we will probably be exhausted from <laughs> multiple hours straight of interviews with these guys. So we ask for grace in yes, advance. <laughs> but we're going to give you everything that we've got on uh, uh, next week after Media Day. And we'll make sure we kind of sum up what we experienced and then we're going to hit the ground running. We're going to have practice coverage for you yeah. that whole next week. And then it's preseason games the, the week after that. And we are really rolling from there. Don't blink. It'll be Christmas before yep. you know it. This it it's happening it's folks. Yep. <laughs> it is happening. Well, so that means we won't see you until season five of the That's Thunder right. Basketball Universe podcast. So Feeling old yet, Paris? I mean, goodness <laughs> gracious. For context, the, when I first started with the Thunder, it was the first season Year of the one. Thunder Basketball yep. Universe podcast. So you and I, we've been growing up together right. <laughs> in, this, in this TBU. All right. Well, thank you so much for watching and for listening and for supporting this podcast. If you haven't already, Be sure to hit that subscribe button, leave a comment, rate wherever you get your podcasts. Thank you so much to our producer, Matt Bishop. And until next time, until season five, thunder up and catch you later.